Today, I want to use light to describe what a speaker directivity is. So first things first, I do understand that light and sound are not the same thing. The idea is just to use light as a way to help people understand what directivity is. So you may have seen graphs showing the frequency response of a speaker, and then you'll see something called a directivity index. If you would have asked me about that five years ago, I would have no idea what that means. To put it simply, it is the difference between the direct on axis response of a speaker, which is pointed directly at your ears versus what is happening off axis when you're going side to side and listening off axis to the speaker. On axis, off axis. If you see a graph where the directivity index is perfectly flat, which you typically don't, what that means is that there is no change in the sound if you go on axis to off axis. So that would show an omnidirectional speaker where the sound is the same no matter where you are around the speaker. Of course, most speakers don't work that way. Typically, you have one that is forward firing and most of the sound is directed directly in front of it. Some of the sound does go off to the side. What's important to note is how similar the on axis response is to the off axis response. What you typically expect from a speaker is as you go off axis, the higher frequencies tend to fall off. And you can test this with your speakers. If you listen to it directly on axis and start moving off to the side, you'll notice that the higher frequencies start to drop off and that's just normal. I think this is one of the most important aspects of a speaker design because it is related to the physical properties of the speaker. You may have heard me say that a speaker with a good directivity index takes well to EQ and I'll show you why. So let's pretend that this light is a speaker. As you can tell, it is forward firing not omnidirectional because as I go towards the back here, you'll see that there is no light coming towards the back. Shining the light directly onto the screen, you can see that the dispersion characteristics is wide and more diffuse compared to this flashlight where the beam pattern is obviously more narrow and sharper focus. And as with the speaker, you'll notice that the direct on axis is the brightest. As you get further off axis, you see that the energy over here, amount of light or amount of sound in the case of a speaker, starts to fall off. But for the sake of this example, I don't wanna talk about how much light, the quantity of light, I wanna talk about the quality of the light. So right now this RGB light is set to a white output and pretty much all across here, it's the same color of light. That would indicate that this has a good directivity index because the on axis response whatever's in the center, doesn't change very much from what's off center. The quality of the light, the color remains relatively the same. But here I have a yellow gel and this changes the color of the light. So I'm gonna put this gel on both sides of the light and look what happens. So the center is white, but the side is yellow. This is similar to a speaker that has a directivity index mismatch. So here I have an app that can control the color temperature of this light from more blue to more yellowish. This would be equivalent to using EQ to change the tonality of a speaker. So I have my camera set to manual white balance and right now this is probably a little too yellow. This is obviously too blue. So I moved to this more orangey one to make it more obvious but if I place this in front of here you can see that the white is no longer white, it looks more orangey now. This is like a speaker that has a colored sound, it's not neutral. So neutral would be white, but I can go ahead and change the color here to try to make it a little bit more neutral. Maybe somewhere around there. It should look like white, grayish. You can tell that there's less of a color shift when I adjust here. This is like using DSP to change the tonality. But as you can see, I'm using this to cover the entire speaker. So on axis and off axis is still the same. It's just covered by this orange gel. But a speaker with bad directivity has dissimilar off axis response. So look at the screen right now. You'll see the center is more bluish. The side is more orange. So now what can you do with EQ? We can make on axis more neutral by going here, but the side is very orangey. If I fix the off axis and maybe try to neutralize the orange by making this more blue, well, the center is too blue. This is exactly what happens with a speaker that has a bad directivity index. You can fix on axis or off axis, but you can't fix both at the same time. So yes, in many ways that is overly simplistic, but I hope this helps some of you understand the importance of directivity index when it comes to EQ. And maybe the next time you see a directivity index graph, 
you'll have a better idea of what that means. So let me know in the comments below if that was helpful to you. And if you're interested in a similar video where I show how light can describe the dispersion pattern of a speaker, click on the link somewhere here. I know you've been waiting on the deal for the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. You already know it's the most comprehensive Dolby Atmos Calibration Toolkit, but you just gotta get a deal. So here it is. Go to spatialcd.com and get 15% off your Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. So use the code NOFOMO15 and don't miss out on this deal. Use the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit and stay tuned.